past nine o'clock. Welcome back to Great Day for this Friday. Of course, you, everybody realizes we have a very tight relationship with the Blank Park Zoo that we're so very proud of. And the Conservation Series speakers that they have at the Blank Park Zoo are absolutely amazing. And what a way to wrap things up this year. Last night, it was so big, they had to move the location. Mm -hmm. of the Conservation Series speak, uh, speech last night. Uh, Karen Oberhauser is here. She's Associate Professor at University of Minnesota speaking about the monarch butterfly and the butterflies in general last night right over here at the Science Center and you said it was an amazing crowd. Yeah, it was a great crowd. We had kids four years old and people 84, so it was a great range of people, lots of backgrounds. It was really fun. Why are people so intrigued with butterflies and monarch butterflies in the past couple of years? Well, I think that people People, there are a lot of reasons that people really care about monarchs. They're beautiful. Um, you know, every stage, the caterpillars, the chrysalis, the adults are all beautiful. They're very familiar, so a lot of people have seen them as children, so they're used to kind of going out and seeing them and making those connections with nature. They're very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, they have this incredible migration that really intrigues people, how an insect that weighs as much as a paperclip can migrate all the way from Des Moines to central Mexico. So there are right. just a lot of reasons we we admire and care about monarchs. And we were talking off air that, and, you know, and this is just personal experience, but last summer was the first summer where I said, I'm just not seeing them. I, very, very mm -hmm. few anymore. What, what has happened? Well, you know, the fact that you're noticing that is, is I think, really telling, that people, people notice monarchs. And I have a lot of people saying that to me. I used to see so many of them in mm -hmm. my yard or my farm or the parks that I went to, and, and I'm not seeing them anymore. So like for many species, they're losing habitat. I mean, there used to be this whole section of the country used to be covered with prairies that were great monarch habitat, and those are gone. Mm -hmm. So we're losing the habitat that they need to build up those populations during the summertime. What is a lifespan of a monarch butterfly? So the lifespan, if we think about just the adults, is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. is the adult butterfly lives about a month. So one adult butterfly lives a month, and during that time it's mating and laying eggs. But the generation, so we go through two or three generations in the summer where the adults live a month, but then the generation that migrates to Mexico lives eight or nine months. So okay. those monarchs will leave here in late August th through September, fly down to Mexico, stay there all winter long, and then start back in the spring and get back. Right now they're just moving into Texas, right? right today as we speak, mm -hmm. um, there are monarchs in Texas, and then they'll lay eggs and their offspring will be the ones to come back here in a month or so. And they go as far north as Canada? Yeah, they'll go into Canada, um, especially Ontario, the, the part of Canada that's actually south of much of the United States, but mm. they, there are monarchs north of Minnesota up to, into Winnipeg, so mm -hmm, they'll go into Canada. And then they turn around and go back in the winter. And then the last generation goes back in the fall. And so the winter ones are sort of super monarchs in a way. Yeah, some people call them the Methuselah generation because <laughs> <laughs> they live a lot longer than the others. But they can live longer because, for one thing, they're going to Mexico where it's very cool. These spots in the mountains are very cool. So they're because they're cold-blooded, their whole metabolism just slows down. It's like if we could stick ourselves in a refrigerator for 10 years and come out the same age we are now. Mm. It's kind of that's the the cool conditions just slow down their life. Now, do the monarchs travel just that ma that corridor in the central part of the U.S., or is this all over the country that they all they flock up north? Yeah, it's all over the country. So I like to think of it as kind of this wave. So if we imagine the monarchs moving south in the fall, they're kind of covering the whole eastern quarter of the United States, and it's just this wave of monarchs that's moving south um, during the fall. And so it's, it's, they're concentrated just because where their habitat is, there are more of them. I mean, you're right in the middle of it here in Iowa. Yeah. This is kind of the center of it. We talk about the I-35 corridor and mm -hmm. kind of a couple hundred miles out on either side of I-35 is where most of the monarchs are just because that's where the habitat is. But there will be some coming from Maine and New York and Ohio. So. They're, they're covering that whole area, and the, the same in the spring. And the main reason that we're seeing less and less monarchs, ha you said, is because of their habitat is disappearing? Yeah, their habitat is disappearing, and, and there also used to be a lot of milkweed plants growing in corn and soybean fields, and those are gone now. So what we have to do, they're gone because um, 
farmers can use Roundup on the crops after the crops come up. So that's a very effective way of controlling weeds, but it means that we've lost a lot of habitat. So that's what we need to make up for is the the milkweed that used to be in the corn and soybean fields. But this is something very tangible. Like we have a lot of amazing speakers come in and talk about rhinos and mm -hmm. the tigers and things like that. Something we can't really experience unless we go to a zoo. Where butterflies, that's something we can personally affect. Right. I think we can affect it. We notice it. I mean, individual people notice that there are fewer monarchs now. But it is just exactly like you said. It's something we can do about. And although so, people can do stuff about uh, for the other animals that we just got them talk about that Jackie mm -hmm. just mentioned with the monarchs, we can do something and see a direct result yep. in our own backyard. In your own backyard. And it's it's kind of nice because when we talk about saving rhinos or wolves or spotted owls, there's nothing tangible that we can right. do. But you know, if, if you have a little piece of ground in a city or a suburb or a, in a, a farmhouse, you can plant milkweed plants and nectar plants that the monarchs need and, and they'll come to that and Now use where it. do you find milkweed? Because I've seen a lot of seed racks in my time, but I've never seen the <laughs> seed package that said milkweed. Well, we're starting to see that. Are we so now we this are year? starting to see that. Um, seed packets of milkweed. Um, there are, and also plants. So at a lot of garden stores you can find the actual milkweed plants that you can plant. And what's nice is there are a lot of species of milkweed. There are actually over a hundred species of milkweed that are native to North America. And monarchs will use Use any of those. So um, some people don't really want to have common milkweed in their gardens because right. it does kind of, it's a little aggressive. And, <laughs> and it's it kind of rangy looking. Spread, yeah, so yeah. it's, but it has a beautiful flower. Yeah. Um, but there are, um, there's a milkweed called swamp milkweed, Asclepius incarnata, which is a beautiful garden plant. Butterfly weed, Asclepius tuberosa, which is a great, great host plant, and then lots of other kind of fun ones that you can find and you know, they're starting to be more available, and that's one of our Is it goals. A swamp milkweed. I know a lot of people have creeks behind their their residence. Would that be something you just scatter the seeds yep. in the creek area? You could scatter the seeds, or or buy a couple plants, and then they'll scatter seeds. It takes a little while to establish, so when you scatter the seeds, you're not 100% sure you're going right. to actually get the milkweed. Mm -hmm. But buying the plants is a good. So if we plant something like this year, when it warms up a little bit more, will the butterflies be able to utilize it later on this summer? Yep, this year. They, well, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And will they yeah. propagate themselves, the plants? Will they seed themselves and come back? Mm -hmm. Or are they yep. perennials? Or? Yep. Um, all the milkweed species that are native here are perennials. Okay. And so you just get them going and they'll spread either by seed or by underground roots. So they can spread in, in different ways. Uh, last Definitely. summer, I actually had right by my garage a common milkweed come up and I left it. Good. And, and my, my, I hope my wife isn't watching, but I left it and she <laughs> said, cut that, you know. And by the end of the summer, in August, swear on the Bible, there was a, a monarch caterpillar on one of the yep. leaves. Yeah, so they'll find it. actually works I yep. mean, if you, if you it, leave it there. It really does work. And it's, it's great fun to see that in your yard, to go out and see some monarch caterpillars. And you can look at eggs, look for the monarch eggs. And the chrysalis so. and watch it develop. Mm -hmm. And yep. mm -hmm. that'd be really neat. Well, thank yep. you for being here. Now, yeah. if people want to get some more information on this, what's the best way to follow what you're doing up at University of Minnesota? Can they um, keep an eye on that at all? Sure. Sure. So the Monarch Joint Venture mm -hmm. um, is a website, monarchjointventure.org, mm -hmm. is a place where people can go for information on all sorts of things that have to do with monarch conservation. Monarch Joint Venture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we know we're going to try and do our part and continue to educate people, uh, educate people on how milkweeds grow because it's something else we're not seeing very much, as you've been saying. So right. try and bring a little bit of that habitat back and see if we can get butterflies all across the metro this summer. Well, Good. Thank you thank for you. coming over this morning. We know you had a long evening, and we do appreciate it so much. Yeah. yeah. Nice well, to meet you.